Years later is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on Matilda. It was released on August 2nd, 1996. Does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> May, Thursday. What year? No, what year is it? Two of those movies, again, keep saying this, where I first watched it at school, I think my home teacher in high school showed it to us, or I think in middle school, I don't know. But again, another film I remember watching in school and being like, I like this, and once I saw that it was hitting its 25th anniversary, I was, I was perfect, an episode of years later, so I could rewatch it. So this isn't a first time watch, and this is an enjoyable, fun movie. A lot of ridiculous stuff in here, you know, like grabbing like a girl's pony, two ponytails and swinging her around that ridiculous, amazing scene. But you have this little girl, named Matilda who has special abilities and no one really acknowledges her her parents doesn't her brother doesn't they just laugh at her and tease her and it's, not, it's not until she actually goes to school because she wants to go to school she already knows how to read she goes to the library with very very little which is very dangerous she could get kidnapped she's very intelligent it turns out she has telekinetic abilities which I don't know how she has them I forgot how the film tells us why but it doesn't matter because you know does some cool stuff taking tapes away messing with the principal teacher and whatnot and then speaking of that actress playing her who looks very angry you are also very entertaining. She's like the best part about this film. Whenever she's introduced, she seems very menacing, very big, kind of large kind of character. And it's like, all right, this is one crazy, scary character, okay? And again, that swinging scene, ponytail scene, where she just has a little girl carries in, in ponytail. She doesn't like that for some reason. She just grabs it and swings it. It's like, all right, so this is the type of movie that I'm in for. All right, I'm 100% in. But again, whoever this actress is, she commits 100% and it's great. I'm bad with names, clearly. Wouldn't be surprised if most people, like people who love this movie, their favorite part is the principal because she's just over the top and just kind of ridiculous to the point where it's entertaining to watch. See this bitch would be very much angry throughout this whole movie for, I guess, reasons because she misses her brother or ex? That painting? I don't know if it's her brother or ex or husband, but there's even one scene where he makes this really large boy eat this chocolate cake and everyone thinks they can't do it, but one of the students, they start standing up for him and they start chanting, eat it, eat it, eat it, or something like that. And it's like this very powerful moment, very fun moment too, because that cake looks, I don't know, man. I'm not like a dessert kind of person. When I saw this and I was like, that cake does not really appetize me, but man, this little boy loves it, and she just forces him to eat it and whatnot. And then after all the kids encourage him, he like licks off the really large plate, by the way. And she shuts everyone down. She like basically knocks out the boy with the plate. And it's like, is this not illegal as well? I mean, they say that in the film. These kids try to go tell the parents what happens and they don't believe it because it'd be illegal. It's just here so she say type stuff. So again, the things she do to these kids, like she's grabbing these kids, putting them in danger, knocking this little boy out with large plates. And it's like, all right, you know, this teacher, this principal, I mean, is like the worst principal and also the best. She even likes eating that truck when Matilda and her, the very nice teacher, they go to her house. Cause it's like, I don't know. It seems very close in terms of the time frame but it's probably far but the way the movie sort of just paces itself and pans out it seems like her house is very much close to the school but she has a very nice looking house in the middle of the woods but as I find out she works out she like jumps from her second story to her first story like it's nothing and so she's again that scary factor she's scary as fuck but like she likes eating that same chocolate cake as well there are some memorable students like that one black girl where she steals that gecko I think a lizard and then there's a drinking bit where that principal is drinking water with that little lizard inside there and it's like you know all the kids are laughing she doesn't like anything from the kids laughing looking they have to follow orders on strict orders and it feels more like a prison which i think some people may argue that you know school is pretty much a prison which is what this movie kind of portrays it as because of the way the principal dresses and whatnot the one really chubby kid the little girl with the ponytails and even that family themselves where you know you, you got the dad that's like putting in all these checks and money because he's selling people fake not fake but cars that are beat down the mother cares about her look and whatnot and the brother just being an annoying brother bothering her sister kind of bullying her they have their their trait fun to watch also, another thing I did not know is that Danny DeVito directed this fucking movie. When I got to the credits, it was like directed by Danny DeVito. I was like, what? Penguin himself from Batman? That shook me. I was like, no way. There's no, absolutely no way. And I looked up, yeah, Danny DeVito directed the goddamn movie. I was just very much shocked by that. I was like, he directed the goddamn movie? And then the whole going to the house bit where the principal was playing cat and mouse with Matilda and the very nice teacher, making noises, having a chase around her own home. She cracked like a goddamn dumbbell by the end, crashing her own place. It's like, she's willing to kill essentially 
strange lady. Like, she has killing eyes in her eye. Whoever is invading her home. There's always one thing I've always liked about this certain bit or part. Is Matilda hiding under the table upside down like that? Like, I've always wanted to do that. When I saw that, I was like, you know, I'm gonna try doing that. It's not possible, honestly. Um, you know, it's movie magic. But I was like, that's always been really cool. Matilda in the nice tea, they just hide the random amount of, you know, feet or whatever away from her house and into the middle of the woods and whatnot. And then she comes back to the house. And before that, she, like, shows her powers to her brother who just keeps bothering throwing carrots. She just turns it around and throws it back at him. I'm actually surprised that he didn't, like, snitch on her. He just seems like a snitch. would be like, hey, mom and dad, our so-called little girl here, our sister here, daughter, you know, she's, she's got Magneto power. They don't believe her. Just like the parents don't believe that this principal can actually hurt these kids and put them in danger. But she goes there just mess with her, this painting and whatnot, making it look like it's paranormal at her house. But there's one fatal mistake. I got a red ribbon. That's where it all fall apart. But not too far because she shows up at school and she messes with her again, spinning her on the earth thing, having her fly out. Oh yeah, she just throws a kid out in this part. Like, you crazy. What are you doing? She just throws a kid out, but Matilda has not fly and whatnot. The teacher knows about her abilities and, you know, she just acknowledges them and just accepts them. And then there's this flying CG bit, which, you know, looks awful. It doesn't look the best, but, you know, it's just one part. I'll just let it pass. It's just this one part that's like, okay, that's doesn't look too good. Because if that was the whole movie, I was like, okay, stop, please. But it's just one little bit. And then they have her flying out of the door. There's this amazing scene of them, all of them throwing food at her for the mistreatment of all these kids. Kicking her out, literally throwing food or whatnot. She goes in her beat up car. She leaves, never to be seen again. And so that's the end of her sort of character, which sucks. You know, I was like, God damn it. She was really entertaining just watch putting all these kids in danger. And then she goes up for adoption. The nice teacher actually adopts her as a daughter because they just enjoy each other's presence. And they have this motherly daughter, like, you know, kind of type of feel to it. And so her blood parents are like, okay, whatever. We're going to leave. No, okay. Some people work just right there. And then they leave off. Turns out they just never really care for her, which is pretty sad. But hey, you know what? She's living with her best friend and now mother. So, you know, who cares? She's living her best life now. And then I think that's it. That was Matilda. That's all I had to say about it. I liked it. It's good. It's fun, especially because of the principal. And Matilda is kind of this underdog type of character. But in the end, she's just, you know, OP as fuck because she has this power. Like, if you grew up watching this movie, I could definitely see this being your favorite because it could, I think it just has everything all like the, the kids, the cute kids, and then this very mean teacher, which some students may experience now. But it's like relatable ridiculous at times it's just fun so in the end matilda 25 years later still holds up it's still quite enjoyable entertaining and pretty good won't be my favorite but it's, it will be memorable for you know putting kids in danger by this principle so that's it for me this has been the world so far and thank you for watching